Hello, welcome to Unicorn Chef. Uh, we are live today and we're waiting on our guest, who's Devin Taylor. And we are just gonna kind of hang out and have some drinks and relax until Devin gets here, which should be in the next minute or two. Um, we all know how things go. Sometimes you get caught up at work and hung up at work, so. All right, one minute, please. Hello. Hi, John. So every, as I said to everyone, Devin's going to be here in any minute, but she is running slightly behind today. And we're all going to be kind of kind of empathetic. And we know how that goes when you get caught at work, which literally at this time of night, no one wants to be stuck at work. So if you want to do an ask me anything while we're making chicken wings, seriously, feel free to toss anything in the chat. And I'm happy to talk with you about anything. If you're interested in Unicorn Chef, have any questions about our community and like kind of some of the fun things that we do, which is basically just cook and drink and make horrible, horrible Twitter jokes all day long, uh, feel free to ask that as well. Thank you, John. At least I appreciate that you're being interactive. So <laughs> one of the things we're making today, which I'm kind of interested about, is we're gonna do air fryer chicken wings. I have never actually used an air fryer. And on top of the fact that I've never used an air fryer, I've realized when I was in the grocery store today that I've never made chicken wings either. I'm 34 years old and have never, obviously I love to eat chicken wings, but I've never made them before. Any knowledge about what is a TERPO? What is a T-E-R-P-O? I'm unfamiliar with the acronym, actually, if you'd like to educate us in the chat, unless someone else knows, too. If you let me know what a TERPO is, maybe I actually know I just might be unfamiliar with the acronym, so. Well, John lets us know what a TERPO is. We're making uh, Vampire Killer Honey Black Garlic Wings today in the air fryer which is supposed to be absolutely amazing. Um, everyone I know who has said that they have, oh. No, I don't know anyth what, anything about a temporary extreme risk protective order. I'm sorry that your firearms were seized. So that's terrible. And good luck to you getting your firearms back. And I don't know if I'm being trolled right now, but. This is going to be a really interesting episode right now. We were talking about Brie. Thank you for being here. Um, Brie, if you have anything interesting to talk about besides um, getting your firearm seized, which is something that I'm actually, I was in a mass shooting. So I'm actually really anti firearm and I don't like them and they make me really, really nervous. Um, and I'm sorry that the new laws were manipulated by the Giffords and your firearms were seized. But if you're here ranting about it on YouTube, I don't know, um, maybe there's a self-help group for that or a support group or something of that nature. So I'm gonna text our guest actually and see if she's gonna be here. And if not, I'm just gonna drink my tequila. Brie, what did, you, what did you make for dinner tonight? I'm very curious actually. Brie's an amazing cook and she's part of like the unicorn chef uh, herd and she's absolutely spectacular, so. Mm -hmm. One of the really good things about this is I can put users in timeouts. So if they start talking about like firearms and kind of like weird protective orders and things like that, I can just put them in timeout, which I was able to do for the last next five minutes. So that's kind of exciting. What a great feature. I'm basically going to give the guest like till 715, which I think is fair. And then we'll go from there and I might just make the chicken wings myself. But according to the recipe. Oh, that's me talking. We are going to season the chicken wings with dry seasoning. And then that's going to be one of the first things that we do is we're going to put a little bit of oil on them and go from there. Brie made Italian. She put some wonderful pictures on Twitter and on Instagram as usual, which is wonderful. Mm -hmm. All right. As I said, I'm going to send our guest one more text message and we'll go from there. All 
All right. So clock is ticking at 7.08. We have till 7.15. Either way, I'm going to eat some fucking chicken wings. One of the first things we were supposed to do was put a little bit of oil on the chicken wings and then season them from there. And then I have them all in this big bowl here. One of the ways we're going to divert from the recipe is that my friend who does air fryer chicken wings all the time told me to put a small, small amount of flour on them as well, which I'm also going to do. So, <laughs> so to shout out to Brie and my mother who are basically here for like every episode and are my small little fan club and I love them very much. They're wonderful people. So again, I'm just putting a little bit of oil on the wings and then I'm going to season them. Stuff I'm going to put them on is slap your mama or as my mom wrote once on it, don't slap your mama because no one should be slapping their mama. Paprika. <laughs> Garlic powder. Brie, I'd be super curious to know what you actually put in your air fryer besides popcorn and what some of your recommendations are. I'm going to use Turkish cumin. I love cumin. It's one of my... Oh, fuck. Ooh, well, these are going to have a lot of cumin on them. And I actually don't think there's anything that's too much cumin. So we're going to go from there. And this mixed up spice here. And I'm gonna mix it all together. <laughs> and these are just gonna kind of hang out. Oh, I should get some flour as well as my friend said. These are gonna kind of hang out just for a couple minutes while we heat up the air fryer. And the nice thing about all of this is that it's actually gonna be really quick and painless and easy, so. Check on our guest again. As I said, I'm willing to be a slightly patient here because no one likes being stuck at work. So, and I appreciate anyone who's still here because this is definitely not going to be like the most interesting episode of uh, the most interesting episode of Unicorn Chef, but it is what it is. So we're gonna roll with the punches and just eat and drink and have a nice time. I heard air fryer corn on the cob is really good. One of the things that someone I work with actually, and I don't know, what is your opinion, Brie, about Brad saying he likes air fryer steaks? Because I thought that was kind of extreme and I'm not sure if I would ever do an air fryer steak. All right. My wings are sitting here right now in their oil and in their seasoning. I'm going to put a little bit of flour on them because as my friend's fiance said, that makes them nice and crispy. All right. Thank you, Brie. Thank you for drinking wine with me. I have a huge tequila right here, which I made like way too strong. And so probably if the person gets here in the next four minutes, we're actually going to be in for a really, really interesting hour of Unicorn Chef. But if not, I'm still going to have a nice evening. So yes, I agree. No on air fryer steak. As much as I love bread, that sounds like really horrible. <laughs> And so there's a whole bunch of like really intense meat people in Unicorn Chef who are always showing pictures of what they grill and everything. And I'm curious what they would have to say about air fryer steak. They would probably like it with ketchup too, which maybe Brad does as well. I don't know. Mm. A little bit of flour. Our countdown has kind of started. We've got like three minutes and then I'm gonna sign offline as much as I love talking to all three of you who are in the chat right here, so. Just a pinch of flour is what my friend said. It's something to make it nice and crisp. Brad is a, Brad is a single man. So like, it, as Bree says, Brad's like a McDonald's chef. Brad can be a McDonald's chef because he's a single man in my opinion, so. Mix these up here. And basically what's gonna happen 
And so I'm gonna let them sit for a minute or two and then go from there. Shout out to Bri again, who's my friend at work, who's here keeping me company today, and I appreciate that. And I wish you were here so I could feed you some of these wings. And someone could try them. My family's going to try them, so hopefully they're at least good for them. So. I agree. I like the high direct heat, and then I actually put it in the oven, and I finish it in the oven to bring up, like, the internal temp a little bit, which I think is nice. So. Hmm. Huh. I need some more tequila, I think, to make this more interesting. And we've got one minute on the clock. We'll see how this goes. <laughs> I th here's what I'm kind of curious about. I don't know how many actual, like wings to put in the box or the little basket or whatever. So it says in the recipe that I'm only supposed to, I'm supposed to distribute them evenly and not crowd them. So if I've got like 12 wings, I'll probably do like six or seven a pop. And yeah, I don't, I think it'll be nice without the fat. And then I have a nice sauce here, which I actually should, I actually made the sauce earlier. I like to spend more time with the guests, <laughs> but, but that couldn't happen today. So um, I made it earlier and I'm just going to heat it back up right now. And oh, yay! All right, let me let you in. All right, I'm you're going in, you're coming in hot. You are coming in. Hey there. Oh, <laughs> I'm so happy to have you here. How are you? I'm doing all right. You know, things were um a bit busier than anticipated at my end of my day today, but uh, I'm here. I felt bad for you because I'm like, no one actually wants to be on a work call at this point of the night, like no one at all. So I'm excited to have you here. And I think we should be completely, we're good to go. Um, so, well, I'll ask, by the way, like when we're done with this, if it, I can cut the first 10 minutes of me just rambling nonsensically about <laughs> chicken wings out and someone asking me about guns. So, hey. Um, so anyways. Welcome to Unicorn Chef. Uh, this is our guest. You are usually I have a little banter beforehand, but uh, Devin Taylor, am I pronouncing that correct? Yeah, you nailed it. Yep. Yeah, thank. You. I was. I was. You never know. Sometimes. Um, tonight we're going to be making again Vampire Killer Honey Black Garlic Wings, and the charity we're raising money for tonight is the Congo Children's Trust, right? That is correct. Why did you pick um, them? So uh, I've been talking with my girlfriend a lot lately about uh, the sort of impacts that technology has, um, good and bad in the world, and um, artisanal um, mining, um, yeah. cobalt is a huge thing where it's like you've got child laborers going into horrific mining practices, and you know often it's so they can eat. It's not um, it's not a super simple. Um, issue. So this charity, they they go and they try to help divert kids from the artisanal mining. Um, get them. They just finished building a school, um, so it seems like a good cause to help uh, bring impact there and um, hopefully improve the lives of some kids and um, improve practices there. Um, ideally, ending child labor would be nice, but you know, it, I think any step in the right direction is good. I think too, it's a good, it's something good to bring attention to because particularly with like the DRC and mining and stuff like that, I think they, there'll be some big press and it gets a lot of attention for like, you know, three to six months and then it goes away. But really this is a consistent problem that's gone on for years. So I think it's awesome that you are raising money for that. And so yeah. now every unicorn chef, we have two questions we like to ask people. Um, the first question I'm going to ask is what are you drinking tonight? Are you having an after work cocktail or a wind down or I definitely think a wind down is appropriate. Let me see what I've got. <laughs> in. Like, has this gone to vinegar while I've been out of town? I think it's probably okay. Let me try. I kind of want to just get you a straw and just have you drink out of the bottle, like with the straw the whole evening. And I think that will be wonderful. I think that's fine. So that is a, uh, the wine I got at Aldi, it's the quarter cut bourbon barrel aged wine. It's a cab. That's very good. It's very nice. Um, 
I love their wines. They're so reasonably priced and delicious. That's why I like Trader Joe's wines a lot myself. So, so now I'm going to see if I can find a straw. <laughs> <laughs> I have a tequila soda. I can pretend it's water. I could be like, yes, I'm just drinking water. You know, you know me, just making sure I'm nice and healthy on a week, but no, it's tequila soda. So. <laughs> I don't think any of my straws are long enough to do the job. So I'm just going to drink out of the bottle. No. That was me. I like a pirate style, pirate style. Actually. Halloween wine glasses, of course. Uh, That's perfect. Let me adjust my lighting here. Bree says you're a pro and I completely agree with that as well. Yeah. What does it say? I can see the hat, but focus, I can't see what it says. I need wine to focus. So, you know, your brain actually um, uses glucose as fuel. So if you're doing intense problem solving, it actually eats the glucose. And at the more problem solving you do, glucose has to replenish itself unless you replenish it with something with glucose. You do problem solving. And, you know, it has a lot of glucose as wine. So that's, I think, you need some glucose after, after being stuck at work. I think that's, we're just you know, science, treating, taking care of your brain, you know? Yeah. Mitigating attacks, um, uses this brain fuel, got to re-up the brain fuel. Also, you know, after getting off the conference call for a while, it's nice to have a little alcohol. I, yes. Also, it's going to be nice to have wings. So tell me, I'm excited because I've never made wings and I've never made, um, I have never made anything in an air fryer before. And so I'm a little bit, of, I'm a little bit ahead of you. So I can let you kind of explain. And since you are the pro and you've made things this way before, I'm just kind of curious to learn from you and see what different tips that you have and everything like that to make air fryer chicken wings. Yeah, absolutely. So the first thing I'm doing is just prepping the spice blend. Um, and we have a sous chef in the background, a cat. I'm so hello cat. Hello sous chef. Yeah, that's, um, <laughs> That's Luna off in the background. Um, one of my four cats. Uh, two out of four cats are currently locked in a room because they were. They'd be up in my chicken. Yeah, I would be up in the chicken if I was a cat. I I can't blame them. I can't blame them either. Um, but you know, garlic is really bad for cats, so that's not going to be. <laughs> definitely don't want to give them any of that. Um, what my recipe, see where I'm at. Okay, so starting out with the spice blend, starting with half a teaspoon of black pepper. So fun thing too, like, so trying to go and get chicken wings. I haven't had any issues buying chicken wings. I've heard okay. that there's shortages and in some places it's really difficult, but it's yeah. not a problem for me. But today my partner goes to go and get chicken wings. Can't find any. Um, I got the last bag in the in the whole grocery store. I got like a from the freezer section, like a big, like I double checked that there was no seasoning on it. I'm like, oh God, because everything else was sold out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, ended up having to go with frozen as well. So I was like sitting there, like trying to wrap a conference call, like building out rules and stuff, and uh, like defrosting chicken in the sink at the same time. <laughs> I think that's when you know how people, I, one of my least favorite sayings in the world is when people are like living the dream and like, but to me, that doesn't sound so terrible. It's like, hopefully you like what you do and you get to make, yeah. make some good chicken wings at the same time. So. Yeah, I, I definitely don't mind what I do at all. Um, it's stimulating. Um, sometimes it, it can be a bit exhausting, but um yeah, I don't mind that. I don't mind that at all. Like, I, I, obviously, like you, there's a fine line, and you can get burnt out of your brain, and that sucks. But I don't mind, like, working really hard and kind of spending myself on it a little bit sometimes. You know, so. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I get a lot of satisfaction, especially if you build something like really good. And it's like, oh yeah, that's solid. That's going to be really hard to evade. It's good mitigation, like things like that. It's. It's really satisfying to get implemented. So, um, but I did deal with really bad burnout earlier this year. That is definitely a bit of a struggle sometimes. 
for me, one of the things is like realizing when I'm on the path to burnout and trying to stop it and like pull the handbrake, like, you know, almost like I'm in like one of those like trolley cars on like the you know thing and switch tracks really quick because like the problem is like, by the time you're burnt out of your brain, like you, you have to rest, I think. Does that make any sense? I don't know. Oh, so. absolutely. Um, I lucked out earlier this year. I was dealing with it really bad and uh, I had to get a surgery. <laughs> so um, it was going to require me taking off several weeks. So there was. <laughs> so that was enough time for me to recover pretty well. What but, advice um, would you have to people who are burnt out who... I mean, I, I think taking PTO when you start to feel it coming, like it, the thing is like, if you're really, really like full on in burnout, I don't think two weeks even is enough. Yeah. Um, so it, it, a lot of it, I think depends on your leave policy. So let's see, that's teaspoon of garlic, <laughs> teaspoon of onion. Um, yeah, I mean, a lot of it depends on where you work. You know, some places will let you take leave like maybe fmla even if it's a mental health thing and you can get it documented um because like if you're if you're already there if you're fully burned out i mean i it might take a couple months to reset so i definitely think checking in um doing things that you enjoy um that you know for me artistic pursuits are a big thing yeah um, so you DJ? yeah a dj Really quick before we get into your DJing, I'm gonna just narrate what, what it is that you are putting into the, the seasoning, if you don't mind. That yeah, was my feedback in one of the episodes is I need to be more about the cooking and talk more about like the ingredients and stuff. So I'm gonna try to do that. Oh, my mother says cooking is a great remedy for burnout. I think cooking and eating are great remedies for burnout. So some one of the first things that we're supposed to do here, this is what uh, is being demonstrated right now, is spice the wings with black pepper, cayenne pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, smoked paprika and a tablespoon of salt. Um, so that's what's being demonstrated here for us right now. And then I already did mine and also put like cumin and a whole bunch of other wonderfulness on them as well, so. Very nice, yeah, I'm, oh, oh that's fine. A little too much salt. I, yeah. I ended up with like four pounds of chicken, like normally I aim for two or three with this recipe. I'm like, it's fine. The sauce definitely makes enough, so making a little bit of extra um, seasoning blend is fine. I really love the flavor of the smoked paprika in parts of the wings. I think that's one of my favorite parts of the spice blend. I love smoked paprika, so I love it. And I also love cumin. Cumin, I can put cumin on anything. And when I was putting it on, like I just dumped a whole big mess of it on. I'm like, oh, well, that's fine. So <laughs> This is fine. Yeah. Okay, so got the seasoning blend. All right, so patting the chicken dry. Now, patting the chicken dry um, is important for I didn't getting the right sort of crispy texture. Okay. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't do, I missed that part. But I added some, my friend told me that if I add flour, it'll make it a little crispy. Yeah, you can definitely add a little flour to it. That can help as well. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna pat it dry, I think. My chicken has uh, finished defrosting. Like feeling that out at the moment, <laughs> off screen. Big old bag of frozen chicken. So that's basically <laughs> why I have like this. I, I think I have the same brand actually. Hey, it's what you can find, right? Yeah. And I mean, it's chicken. You don't need to have like an organic chicken for a chicken. So my my freezer. I almost wanted to call it Farmer Jack. That's like the old school uh, thing in um, Detroit. My old school chicken will be fine. We'll freeze it. So air fryer is easily like my favorite appliance I've ever touched in the kitchen. Like I, I was on, on, go ahead. Please. No, you please go ahead. Okay, so yeah, um, I was a holdout for a while. I was like, okay, I don't get the hype. Like, it's a, it's a little convection oven. Like, what does it? <laughs> yeah. Do I really need this? Is it going to be? Um, I use it more than anything else, by far. 
Um, whether it's like reheating something, like putting a slice of leftover pizza in an air fryer. I've heard that it's it, amazing. It can be better than a fresh slice of pizza. Cook it for a bit, throw an egg on it, cook the egg, do you like it? I love, love an egg on pizza. It's one of my favorite things. That's one of my go-to breakfasts for sure. So my at work, we had a very big discussion about the steaks. I said, I'm using the air fryer for the first time. And my coworker said he makes steak in the air fryer. Do you like the air fryer that much where you'll put steak in it? Yeah. Um, really? Well, it's not my, depends. Like I'm not going to go and get like a really, really nice cut and throw it in the air fryer. But, you know, if I can find a good deal on like a New York strip or yeah. um, T-bone, whatever. I mean, whatever the cut of steak is, a sirloin, anything that's not super fancy, I think it's great. Like, I get great results from it. So if I'm going to spend a lot of money on a steak, like, I'd prefer to do it. Um, like, my go-to method is uh, doing a reverse sear where you start it out in the oven, low and slow, and then yeah. throw it on um, a cast iron pan, you know, just searing hot when it comes up to temp. So my chicken didn't fully finish defrosting, so let me go ahead and throw my first batch into yeah. the microwave. So here's um, one of the questions that I had for my coworkers when we were talking about this, is on my bag of chicken, it said you didn't de need to defrost it all the way and it will make the wings fine even if you don't defrost it all the way. Do you think that's true or do you think you should, like, do you think that would just, is just a bad idea to try to cook them frozen? I honestly have no idea because I haven't tried it. Um, it will definitely change the cooking time. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm spicing it too, so hard to hard to say. Um, I mean, if it works, you know, I'd say go for it. I'm, if it was just a little frozen, I think it'd be fine. Some of these wings are very frozen still, yeah. so. Uh, so here's my question while we defrost. How did you get into DJing? What do you like about DJing? Just, I want I want the primer first about the DJing. And then I want to know, I have, I have some more specific questions after that. Oh, there's a thief. Oh. <laughs> Luna, what are you getting into, girly? <laughs> um, so getting into DJing. Um, I started producing music back in 2006 um got into djing in 2008 um the first rave i went to was at an anime convention in chicago that's awesome <laughs> and i was like raves are great why don't we have them around here and as it turns out there was a rave scene that was thriving and already here and uh i found it as i was like trying to throw my own and totally disconnected um, but yeah, I just started DJing house parties, DJing online. Did you DJ online at all during the pandemic? Yeah, I did uh, a number of things during the pandemic. Hmm. Did you find so, DJing online satisfying or what was your opinion about it? Um, I like doing it. The problem for me is I live out in the middle of nowhere and for a long time I had very unreliable internet so yeah. it was not exactly ideal um it it's not the same as doing it in person for sure like I've like I don't mind doing internet radio gigs I think it's fun um it's good practice having a regular gig like that too yeah. but, um personally for me like my style is I, I tend to um, I don't plan my sets for the most part. Like it's very, um, improvised. So it, for me, a lot of the way that I DJ and the way that I really connect to things are being in an environment where I've got other people and I can kind of feel out the crowd and, yeah. and do that. I, well, I heard that's what was going to be one of my follow-up questions because that's what I heard is really wonderful about it is if you get like a my, my hairdresser, um, my hairstylist DJs, and she talks to me about this all the time. And she said, if you get like a good crowd and you're with good people, like it's a kind of like a rush and a high that there's like nothing else really like it. It's just really interesting when you're playing back and forth with the crowd, I guess. Absolutely feel that. 
<laughs> Mike Ellis has made an appearance. Hello, Mike Ellis. Oh, thank God there's no baking going on. Mike Ellis is one of our, um, another one of our guest hosts as well. And then Bree is one of my coworkers who's absolutely spectacular. And they are basically like honorary VIP unicorn chefs. This <laughs> was what goes on here. So fantastic. <laughs> Do you have a favorite show or a favorite venue that you played? Um, that, so, so my favorite um, is really doing renegades, like out in, out in the wilds, like hauling out sound equipment and gear and just going at it. Like um, this year and uh, last year, um, it, was, it was really fun because the first one we ended up throwing was like in the midst of the pandemic, like had a few friends that had sailboats and we loaded sound equipment onto the sailboat, went up the Mississippi River, loaded onto an island, like had a generator and everything and just set up and went for it. That's amazing. That's, yeah. so one of the things I heard during the pandemic is that in Canada, you know, that the, the lockdown restrictions were very strict. Um, for better or for worse, I have no, you know, if it's not, that, that is what it is, but they didn't have restrictions on boats and in marinas and so i guess they're like in uh, canada over the summer and last summer like the boat party scene was just gigantic because that's the only place legally that you could have parties so i thought that was interesting that is pretty cool yeah i just got back from electric daisy carnival in las vegas How was that? that was ridiculous like i have Never seen stages or crowds that big before, which I mean, considering the pandemic still going, I was like, yeah, well, um, they did require proof of vaccination or negative PCR tests um, on entry. Just got results back because I got a test after I came back and a negative. So, you know, things are great. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it was quite the experience. I fully recommend um, checking that event out. I mean, just so many artists that were kind of like on a bucket list um, to see were there. So um, sometimes that was frustrating because there's like eight stages and I'd have like three artists that I really wanted to see playing at once. So yeah. we're sitting here going back and forth across the Las Vegas Speedway. I mean, I put over 30,000 steps in one of the days on the Fitbit. You. Yeah. But like every day it was like 20,000 to 30,000 steps and my legs still hurt. My feet hurt after things like that. I'm just not used to it. I'm not used to doing it anymore. I used to hike all the time, but then still I was in like hiking boots and stuff. It's just, I wasn't used to it, you know? Yeah, definitely hear that. I think that's a great problem to have that you, there are so many people that you wanted to see that you could, it was hard to pick which one. I think that's an excellent problem. Yeah, definitely a good problem to have. Um, yeah, next weekend. I'm, so I'm flying out tomorrow and that's been a fun thing too. Is like, so I get back from Vegas late Monday night, worked yesterday, worked today. Um, Tomorrow, work a half day, and then I'm flying to Florida. Um, awesome. We got booked to perform fire out at Halloween. So I'll be doing uh, fire fans and other props and character work down there. That's awesome. Yeah. What so are you, where in Florida is it? Uh, it's Live Oak. It's on the north side of Florida. Like we'll be flying through uh, Jacksonville. Very cool. Well, cheers to that. I hope you have a good set. I hope everything turns out well. For sure. Oh, and goodness. So Ultra next year, seeing the chat, that lineup is ridiculous. I want to go there so bad. <laughs> I, um, so also, like, oh, go ahead, please. Oh, yeah. So Pendulum was one of the headliners uh, at EDC. It was Pendulum Trinity, which was like three out of four members, which they were on hiatus for a few years. Like, I didn't know that they were even going to get back together, but... Um, seems like ultra is just a full-on pendulum live every member so that's really exciting but yeah at edc normally it's like three out of four members and the member that wasn't part of 
the Trinity Act, the, the three out of the four, was a drummer, uh, KJ Saka. But he showed up um, unexpectedly there at EDC. It was actually another member of the band that was out. So <laughs> that was a, a really fun surprise. Have you ever, I heard DJing with someone is actually very fun. That's what my uh, hairstylist was saying, that it's like a whole different kind of fun and interesting and she loves doing it actually. Yeah, I've done a lot of tag sets or like back to backs. Um, one of my favorite things is to do like a three in three out tag or doing like a live layering. Like if, um, it's like I've got my decks and someone else has their decks and we're able to connect them together through the same mixer or into the same sound system. It can be really fun to like layer on top of each other. Um, it just, you know, people have to be in it and beat matching with each other. So it's easier to train wreck and screw it up. And when it's good, it's really good. I think some, I mean, it's entertainment at the end of the day. You're at a show. So if there is a train wreck, it's not the worst thing. I still think it's a form of entertainment a little bit, you know? I definitely hear that. Okay. I think that's, so these are like a little bit uh, frozen still. You're cool. I think that's fine. I think it's fine. I mean, I, I don't know. I've never used an air fryer. We'll see though. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of... Um... So so what air fryer did you get? I'm curious. Okay. So here, I actually didn't purchase one. What I did because... So I'm about to go out of town myself for the next like a little while and I'm not going to use an air fryer at Thanksgiving because you know, we're going to have a lot of people and everything like that. So I borrowed my son's air fryer, which is a Phillips. Is this one right here? Let me get it, in, get it into the frame. Hold on. There we go. Thanks. And the, um, it's well loved. The little front compartment busted off, but it still works fine and everything they told me. So, um, and it's, I'm surprised at how easy it was. All I have to do is turn the fucking knob. And I'm like, this is really nice actually. So I'm going to put mine on preheat actually. You need to check and make sure that mine's clean. So what's, oh, it is. I checked. I did check. Okay. No, I mean, I don't know that I, I can take the one. I don't remember. Um, the next thing is um, pretty easy. Easy to manage. I'm ADD and I could watch your cat in the background like, yeah, Bree just said kitty like all day. It makes me really happy when the cat pops up, actually. That's fantastic. Yeah, so I have severe ADHD, and that's honestly one of the things where I really like this appliance because, like, I can preheat it, throw some stuff in there, forget about it. Yeah. And then it's good. And if it's not been cleaned, these baskets are, oh, God. Yeah, so I need to do that. I'll do that while this is deep for us. <laughs> we have two questions from the audience from Mike Ellis. who wants to know why there's a dumbbell on the counter. So I bought a cheap uh, refurbed Kasori. I don't even know what that is. It's just an air fryer brand. Um, so, your house is cool. Your, your roof is amazing, by the way. Oh, thanks. Yeah, it's... Um, let me go ahead and put this back up. So, <laughs> voila, perfect. One of my friends calls it a barn dominium. <laughs> I, yes, like, that's yes. Um, it's like a outbuilding sort of thing with a garage on either end, and it's been finished pretty nice on the inside. Um, it's I beautiful. Like it. Okay, so so I again, we're both ADD. All right, so the yeah. we have the kind of air fryer. And we have a, a dumbbell. What is the dumbbell for? <laughs> so the dumbbell, um, the air fryer, like, was, like, weird about staying on and turning on. Um, okay. And, like, it had to, like, bump it. And then it would turn back on. And, like, well, I'm outside of the return period. Yeah. So I found that if you put the dumbbell on it in the right place, it stays on. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, I'll, I'll take it. Um, so that's what I use to keep the air fryer working. <laughs> I, I thought maybe you were just like really into multitasking and you're like, yeah, I just sit here and I like do my curls. <laughs> Get my curls in, like build that upper body strength. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's nice, you know, it's, it's a bonus uh, <laughs> apparatus. I really appreciate it. 
Um, yeah, just setting it right about there for whatever reason holds it together and uh, connects it. <laughs> I think it's one of those things too. Like that's what, why people, they, people buy weights and you think that you're going to use them and you think you're going to do all these things with them, but really you just end up using them for that. Or I, you know, a paperweight or something like that. Holding a door open. You know. Oh, I like this. Mike Ellis air fryer CrossFit. That could be very interesting. Yeah. I've really planned on, having things more set to go before it went on, but, uh, you know, things did not quite work out. Thank you. I think life very, like, rarely works out exactly how you want it to, and that's okay, you know? Yeah, I definitely agree with that. So I did see a trick, the, um, I saw this trick on the internet of putting water in your air fryer and turning it on to clean it, so... I'm gonna give that a go. Just put a little soap in it. See how that works. You probably do water and vinegar too. That's always that's like that's like the holistic cleaning method. Can I show you my sauce? By the way, my my sauce turned out really well. I think it's really dark. I'm very Halloweeny. Sauce again, just very dark and beautiful. Oh, that's it's glorious. Amazing. I know I'm really happy about it. Yeah, I, I love that sauce. So um, I was sitting here trying to figure out what to make for the show. And um, I was at Big Lots with my partner and we saw this uh, container of black garlic. And I was like, well, that's a fun ingredient. Yes. Um, now you could only find the powder. Yes. So here's what I want to see. So first of all, let me get will you show the audience what is actually oh i am jealous of you smelling it show us what's in there what does this look like yeah so here is a oh, bowl that. of black garlic and i'll go ahead and peel it oh so it's in the sh it's still it's still skin on and everything yeah it's interesting though because the way it's so it's like heat treated and aged um fermented once you peel it like rather than being like individual cloves separated it's just like one That's large beautiful. look at that like, <gasps> mm, just delicious i love it <laughs> that's that is a sexy it's a sexy piece of garlic <laughs> i love it the only thing i could get so i got from trader joe's um a it's fermented black garlic and it's like a almost looks like what's the name of it it's like a instant coffee it almost looks like instant coffee and it says the flavor of this is more like umami and so what i did is i took like i took regular garlic um and i mixed the the black garlic fermented black garlic in with it nice i bet that is going to be delicious it's tasty. I'm happy. I'm excited though, but I'm excited to try the wings and get like them crispy and then have the sauce on it. And just, I just want to eat them whole. And that's what I want to do. So now yeah, I mean, we, we devour this and I ended up making it again to nail down the proportions because of course the first time I make it, like I'm just kind of a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And that's how I do everything. So when you were like a teaspoon of this, I'm like, a what is a teaspoon? I don't know. <laughs> what is this language? What is a teaspoon? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I did not have those measurements the first time I made it. The second time I made it, I was like, okay. Yeah, that seems to be about right. <laughs> now, what she's demonstrating right now is according to the recipe, uh, so you take this, the skillet, right? And then you take the black garlic and mash it up with what, butter and soy sauce, right? Yep. I'm throw the butter in and just get some heat going. I should have started the butter before I started mashing the garlic in, but it's going to be fun. Yeah. My mother wants to know what's the taste. What do you think? Because this is my our first time having black garlic. What is the taste difference between black garlic and regular garlic? Um, way less sharp. Like so, oh. regular garlic is uh, very like sharp and pungent, and, like really. Uh, aggressive in its flavor. Um, 
I, the flavors in black garlic are much more muted. Um, it's definitely like an umami, like just super rich, um, earthy, flavorful. And a bit of like with the soy sauce, I think it pairs really well with the um, the ginger. The ginger really opens it up. That's like one of the things I love about the, the way the sauce comes together. I love ginger. Yeah really works well with this. So I'm just going ahead and get the heat going. Um, I've got some Kerrygold butter, which I love. Excellent taste, Kerrygold butter. I, we basically should just have them as a sponsor on the show, I think. <laughs> they can sponsor anything I do. I love Kerrygold butter. <laughs> Please uh, send blocks of Kerrygold to my house. <laughs> All right, so then just peel the rest of the garlic. I think all my chicken is thawed, so I'm just gonna go ahead and run through that with the paper towel. Okay. And get that dried out. So she was saying that, so do not be like me. Um, again, we'll also, uh, have, we're just gonna blame it on the ADD, me not being detail oriented. Um, I did not uh, blot my chicken with the, the paper towel, and that is supposed to be an actually important step not to miss. So if you were watching at home and you're like, oh, this is something I actually might want to make, um, remember to blot, blot your chicken with a paper towel. So do you like when you come go to Electric Daisy Carnival and all these places that are kind of crowded, do you like just coming back to your barn dominium and just being kind of out in the middle of nowhere and everything like that? I think that's going to be nice. So, so nice. Oh my goodness. So like we are, so my partner owns a, um, an aerial fitness studio and performer, performance yes. company. Um, we have like gigs back to back to back, for, like multiple weekends here. Um, so yeah, whenever we finish, like, I'm just so excited to get to that point where um, we're able to just sit here, watch some Netflix or whatever, yeah. just vibe, <laughs> that's- I like quiet. I like being in places or surroundings occasionally. Like I, I like, I like having things. I like being able to have options and choices and all these wonderful things, but I love sitting somewhere that's absolutely completely quiet and there's nothing like that for me. It just like, it's like a balm to my brain. It's like a little bubble bath for my brain. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I am so ready. Like even tonight after I get everything finished here, going to load up the most of my stuff, I think, and head to my partner's place, throw a bath bomb in and just relax. So ready. <laughs> you should um, bring the chicken wings. <laughs> yeah, and, and I will bring chicken wings because I'm making it fun. So she's excited for that. She's uh has classes going on. She was going to have someone cover so she could help and be my sous chef, but um, Kat has to fill in. See, I'm not saying you, you bring them for your partner. I say you bring them for the, the bathtub and sit in your oh, bathtub. Yeah. <laughs> oh, goodness. Yeah. <laughs> bathtub, chicken wings. It sounds delicious and very <laughs> important. Um, yeah. So one thing about EDC is there is no chill at EDC. Yeah. Um, well, it's Vegas. There's no chill in Vegas, you know. There's no chill. There's definitely no chill where we were at. So we were staying on Fremont Street. And, um, like, you know, we get back and we're like, okay, surely everyone's gone to bed at this point. Nah. No. Buskers, like, banging on trash cans and, like, little old ladies sitting there at the slot machines. Like, we drag ourselves in from partying all night at, like, eight in the morning by the time we make it to the traffic I'm like what's happening <laughs> where am I <laughs> what is this place <laughs> <laughs> what is this yeah I mean that was ridiculous um yeah at that festival like there was one chill-ish place like um the airline Allegiant ran a, a yeah. rave terminal which was cool it was like kind of in the middle of everything and there was a place you could go up and uh they had couches, kind of like an airline terminal, um, a maintained bathroom, which is a blessing, really. Like, 
last thing I want to deal with at like three in the morning at a music festival is a porta potty. The last thing I, it's not even about it being a porta potty. Like if you're out in a bar club type scene, the bathroom at that time of night is just fucking gross. It's just gross. Even if it's a, whether it's a porta potty or not, most of the times, you know? So. Yeah. I mean, their bathroom logistics, um, at least there were really good. Okay. Um, so, I mean, I was pretty happy with that. But yeah, even even being there kind of like further away from the stages, like the entire speedway is like a giant subwoofer. It's just there, there was no peace and quiet. I was like, you need a chill stage. Yeah, um, I just went to New Orleans and New Orleans, New Orleans for me, because I'm a big food person, was like a lot of people's Vegas. And I heard someone say this about something. They were like, oh, it was um." You're talking about a party and they were saying it was good times and bad decisions and for me that's what new orleans is it was like great times and terrible decisions and just great food and great music and I, that's how my hotel was my hotel turned into a jazz club at night so I, the first night i was like oh i'm just gonna go back maybe i'll have like one drink in the hotel bar and i get back and it's just like like a band and all these people and like and like and like chill fucking people too like all musicians who are hanging out there and it was just it's like this is excellent actually this is how i want to spend my vacation <laughs> so so nice yeah we're i'm looking forward to being in florida like we're um there's gonna be trees <laughs> there will be places to go and get a little further away from the music um relax a bit um, yeah I mean, I might get into some shenanigans, like I'll bring my DJ laptop and some gear and try to hop on some campground renegades after we finish up doing our fire performances. No, uh, educate the audience by that. I mean myself, um, what is a renegade? Cause you said that earlier and it sounded really fun, but I don't know what it, I, I, I can kind of fill in the broad strokes, but what is a renegade? So renegades like an underground party or um, like not anything that's like officially sanctioned or whatever. So. Um, in that context, like at a music festival, like individual campgrounds will often have their like mini stages, um, okay. at least something like that. Um, it's like a camp, a campground renegade, but also like out in the outdoors. Like, um, for example, in a random island in the Mississippi River, where we hauled out our sound gear and our generator and everything, and just popped up overnight, threw a thing, packed out, and left. Um, as opposed to, you know, going to a venue or yeah. having some big advertised thing. Um, so is this, everyone I think has their thing that they spend their money on and that makes them happy and also makes their work, no matter how fulfilling your work is, it's also fulfilling. I think when you work really hard, spending your money on something you love, is that kind of what part of what you spend your money on? Do you spend it on sound equipment and everything like that? A lot. <laughs> Um, I mean, at least, at least now, like I, I am able to make a little bit of money doing some things, like not enough to offset what I pay for things. Like I'm, it's like I'm going to have to file what I make in with the IRS this year. Um, That's good. That's like this awesome. One gig, this one gig in Florida, I think, is paying us out. I don't know. It's all going to be eaten by travel costs for the most part. Um, but it doesn't matter though. That's all. I think the fact that you actually get are getting some money to do something that you like so much, even if it covers the cost, to me is that's worth the price of admission for. for oh yeah, day. absolutely. Like I love that. Um, okay, so that's been cooking for a bit. I'm going to go ahead and add my uh, soy sauce to that. So I've got the garlic in there. I've got the butter. Four tablespoons of soy sauce. Now, here's my question. Would you mind terribly if I put my first batch of wings in the air fryer? Oh, God, no. Please go for it. Okay. So I'm going to ask your... All right. So I have the wings with seasoning, a little bit of oil, and a little bit of flour. So I just put them in the basket? Is that... I just put them in the basket? Now I would try to make sure they don't touch. That's um, don't touch what? 
Don't touch the like the, the, the basket? Don't touch each other. So okay. try to make sure that the wings are at least minimally touching. If they're touching a little bit, it's fine. You just want to make sure there's plenty of airflow around them. Okay. So I've got four tablespoons of soy sauce in here. Um, a couple tablespoons of butter with three heads of black garlic. I'm adding four tablespoons of water at this point. And then I'll return. I feel like you're my air fryer sensei, you and Brie, my friend from work. All right, so they were not going to touch. Yeah, for me, I can get um, six wings in the air fryer generally. Yeah, that's about to be what I'm going to get here. Honestly, it's a pretty nice like little individual serving size. You don't have to have an air fryer to do this sort of thing. Like you could certainly do it, stomach, but um, it's just so nice. Like it cooks a good portion. I would like to, I'm actually thinking about buying a bigger air fryer so that I can do things like a whole pizza in it um, or a larger batch of wings. Um, so Am I cool with the sound in the background, by the way? Can you still hear me? Yeah, you sound totally fine. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so that was my thing. Is That's why I didn't want to buy the air, for, like, a buy one before Thanksgiving. Because I'm like, I'm about the, the next time I, I actually cook, like, I'm doing one more unicorn chef in two weeks, which I'm actually really, I'm super excited for that one. But then after that, I'm not cooking until Thanksgiving. So I'm like, and then I'm going to be cooking for a lot of people. So, I, you know, I just, yeah, so we'll see afterwards. Maybe I'll just kidnap. I'll just take my friend's air fryer. <laughs> I like it so much. I just steal it. So, you know, it's, <laughs> they're just so nice. Like I, um, you know, I didn't know how I'd feel about it. Like my parents had one and, um, absolutely loved it. Um, I was certainly like one of the later converts, I think in the trend, but I mean, I've made pies in there. I've made steak, wings a few times now. Um, all sorts of things with leftovers. Like I love repurposing leftovers. So now I see you're going back in with the paper towel. So you're you're blotting. Is do you want a dry wing? Because I've actually seen this like in multiple different things where like people say that's what makes it crispy is the dryness. Like that's why you like air. Like you put things in uncovered so it's the air and stuff like that. I guess. Yeah, so um, with an air fryer, you've got the heating element, you get things up to 10. The fan that's running, it just air blasts everything with the nice high temperatures, and that's what really creates that nice fry effect. And if you've dried the wing, you're just gonna get, um, I mean, so like, I'm gonna put oil on this in a second. Um, yeah. But yeah, you're, you're gonna get a better result if you do dry it first. Like if you forget or um, skip that step, not the end of the world by any means, but um, for the best results, I certainly recommend doing it. So now let's see here. So once they're in the air fryer, they're gonna go for six to 10 minutes. Then I flip them and cook five to eight minutes. So we're still like, I'm gonna, I, I put them in initially for six. I'm gonna put them in two minutes longer. Yeah, and it all depends on the size of your air fryer. For mine, it's a very small air fryer um has a great amount of temp like it just there's not a lot of things going into it at once you know so i suspect since you're putting six wings into yours it'll be very similar to mine in the, in the temperature side of things did you meet your partner at the aerial studio so i met my partner originally um while she was bartending awesome um, and i was like djing in town uh, like I would frequently go to the um, local goth night <laughs> where she would um, be bartending. Um, she also is a belly dancer and did that for a while around town. Like, so like we would just see each other at gigs and stuff. Yeah. Um, I, we reconnected. So like I moved away for a while and moved back in uh, 2019. And um, last year, I was trying to find something to um, get active. Because again, ADHD, like the last thing I'm going to do is go to a gym every day and go onto a machine and sit there and like run. I might 
get all excited about it and manage to do it for like a week, but it's not going to stick around. Um, Ariel for me, is just a very, it's interesting. It's fun. It's, um, yeah. there's a, puzzles kind of pulled into it aside from like building the strength. I like to do something different. And so when I do the, um, when, if I go work out, I do classes and the classes I do are the most ADT classes ever. <laughs> A hit class where every two minutes we switch and do something different. And the whole thing about this studio is that every class they try to switch it up so you're not doing the same thing every time. So, like, literally, it's always changing and you're only doing things for like one to two minutes each. And I'm like, yes, this my brain like loves this. It's so nice. Like, I, I love having things to switch up. And yeah, because it's the same thing every day. It's going to get really boring, whether it's work, whether it's exercise. Like, I need some. Uh, right. Um, like my my work, I work on a like escalation sort of team, and um, you know dealing with security stuff and um deals a lot of dumpster fires. Things just stay active and exciting, and um, keeps me engaged. So, I, so I appreciate I like that. that. Having that sense of urgency at work, it makes me happy, to be honest with you. And it's interesting because, like, I found that sometimes I have, like, a Goldilocks problem where, like, you know, when you're doing really high intense work, you can get burned out. But at the same time, I've realized now that I can't do really laid back work. Like, if I if I do really laid back work, I'm like, what's going on now? <laughs> you know? Well, one of the worst things. Like, I would, I think, rather be just, like, just, you know, at the edge of what I can do. Like, yes you know, constantly busy um, managing things versus just sitting around twiddling my thumbs. Like, it, I find it to be awful. very satisfying when I go, when I look at myself and I'm like, oh my God, I've got so much that I've got going on. I don't know how I'm going to do it. And then like a day or two later, I sit back and I'm like, I fucking did it and I killed it. And that was awesome. And I find that very fulfilling. So <laughs> I feel that for sure. So, okay. Okay. So I'll be good here in a sec to put my chicken in. Oh, so. No. See how clean this is. Uh, have you added anything to the sauce besides the butter, the soy sauce, and the black garlic? I think I've made it to I'm going to add the honey and uh, whatnot at the moment. Like, I've mashed down the black garlic. Um, the butter's melted. The soy sauce is going. Oh, I love that color. It's beautiful. It smells delicious. I love it. So um, I think the next thing on my list is ginger, honey. Um, let's see. Now, she said earlier, too, one of the things we've been saying is, like, no one gives a fuck. If you skip something, you skip something. It's cool. But try not to skip the ginger, I, I believe you said, is what, <laughs> what you said. Yeah, I mean, so the ginger just really opens up the flavors in the sauce. Like, it's... Definitely critical. I, I really liked using the dried minced ginger. Um, it just, it's I'm, very good. I'm, look at these little babies in their basket. Look how beautiful they look. Oh, uh, gorgeous. I mean, I, so now I flip them. I flip them and then I cook them. Okay, ginger root, uh, crushed red pepper flakes. I don't even know that I have a teaspoon. I'm just going to toss the rest of that in there. Yeah. What is a teaspoon? I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> some some quantity of an item. Uh, and then half a cup of honey. I think, that's I think a teaspoon is like, it's just like a wild card measurement, really. That's what I always thought. Like, it just means you can pick your own, whatever you would like, you know? So. What spoon you got? <laughs> <laughs> about half a cup of honey right here. Okay, so I flipped my wings. Now they're going to go back in for like another six minutes, I think. So exciting. Now, what are you putting in right now? I see. Oh, that's the honey. Yep. Slowly. That's the whole thing about honey. Yeah, so much viscosity. All right, I might just have to 
whatever I can get out of here. Um, it's probably going to be about half of what I need. So exact measurements. Eh. Who needs them? What's well, to? I enjoy uh, to taste. I think to taste is actually almost like a technical term, and like yeah. So I like things really spicy. So I mean, mine really really spicy. I'm a huge fan of the spicy food. So that was actually a funny thing. Um, one of the times that my partner and I had run into each other, um, she was belly dancing at a local Indian restaurant for their Diwali festival, and I was DJing there. That's okay. Um, so first of all, can you explain? I actually don't. I know Diwali is an, uh, an Indian festival, right? But I, I don't know very much about you. Can you explain what Diwali is to to our audience? I wish I could. I know it's like a festival lights question mark it goes on for about a week um and i think it just happened i think it i think it just, right it, i think the diwali festival is around this time each year yeah it, i i wish i could speak to that um I have November 4th is diwali. Oh, okay nice tell us about it <laughs> now if i may just because this actually is fun and i like multi multicultural things Diwali is a festival of lights and one of the major festivals celebrated by Hindus, Jains, Sikhs, and some Buddhists, notably, uh, I don't know how to pronounce this one, Newar Buddhists. The festival usually lasts five days and is celebrated during the Hindu lunisolar month, Kartika. Ooh, there we are. So. Got it. Hey, festival lights. I didn't manage to remember that much. Okay, so, so your partner was belly dancing at a Diwali festival at an Indian restaurant. Because that is an excellent start to a story. Yes, she was DJing there. I oh, know she was she was belly dancing. I was DJing. Um, but they had a uh, hot, a spicy curry eating contest there, and uh, you know, she tried a bit of that, and she was pretty impressed. She got to see me throw down because I joined in. I was like, yeah, I'm gonna yeah. enter it. So it was like a ghost pepper curry, and easily. Did one you, of the hottest things did you did you demonstrate your your worth to your your potential suitor or lover like an animal by eating spicy food because i think that's kind of excellent and in a way i think so you know because that was um it's definitely a thing that we both appreciate about our relationship is the fact that we can both get down with spicy food like there's not yeah. one of those situations where like we have to avoid certain restaurants because oh no i can't eat that now, like one of the things we actually did in Vegas was do the, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the Pocky Chips, P-A-Q-U-I. No. They do a, um, they have delicious tortilla chips, just to, just to preface that, like they have other spice levels. But one of the things they've kind of gone viral for over the internet um, over the past few years is this one chip challenge, where they have a single packed potato, or not potato, sorry, tortilla chip that is just absolutely loaded with like the hottest peppers, like... It varies a bit in the recipe year to year. Um, this year it was, uh, I think it was reaper and scorpion pepper. And they say you can't eat one chip. Oh, it's, it's just one chip. Yeah. So it's like I a one chip challenge. Okay. And, so what do you think? Um, it was really vicious and we should not have done that right before going to bed. And good God, the next day was like the first day of the festival and it's sitting there like, it's not good the next day. It's uh, really bad the next day. We'll, um, we'll use the euphemism. It's got to be rough on your stomach today. You know? Yeah, it was It was bad. It was like, oh, no, what have I done? Um, yeah. But we both did it. You know, we both ate the whole chip. We did the thing. Um, and it, it is delicious. Now, they have a ghost pepper chip that you buy them in a whole bag, and I love it. It's like one of my favorite chips. Just the flavor is really good. It does have a lot of heat on it, but if you're really into spicy food, I think it's just wonderful, I, really. I like to sweat, and I like, like, the whole, like, kind of endorphins and everything like that that spicy food gives you. It makes me really happy, so. Definitely try it. I would recommend just getting a bag of the ghost pepper wings. Just send it. So, uh, my air fryer, I need to finish cleaning, but otherwise, I'm pretty close to getting my own bath
These are very beautiful, these wings. The first bunch of wings will be done in like, like two minutes. I think this is a new sous chef. It's a fatter sous chef, I think. Or is it the same one? Three, what do you think? Three, what do you think? Three, what All right. I'm going to go ahead and turn my sauce down a little bit, toss my wings and my spice and my oil. I think my wings need like two more minutes and then they're perfect. Thanks. This is getting them like a nice crispy that I like it. I can tell like as I'm turning them around that they're like beautiful and crispy. And I love this air fryer. That is so exciting. I'm slowly becoming a convert. <laughs> Not slowly, very quickly within like an hour, basically. <laughs> so that's the way it goes. Like I only had to cook like a couple times there and like even things that you would just generally toss, like leftover McDonald's fries. There's no way to save those, right? Now you throw them into an air fryer for a bit and uh, they refresh really nice. Now, so what you're doing is you're putting, so you dried the chicken. Now you're adding oil, right? Yep. And then do you add the spices after the oil? Yeah, so I'm gonna toss um, the chicken and the oil real quick and then I'll just throw the spices in and toss it in that. Chicken hands, I'm gonna have chicken hands. So I'm not washing it in a second, but. So I prefer to have. My partner was able to help is I didn't have to have chicken hands. I prefer to have, not personally, but like I think if you're making something, you kind of have to have chicken hands a little bit because I want it to get in all of like the nooks and crannies. And so because I was like hosting and tossing the chicken at the same time, I couldn't like get in there and massage it and knead it and give it the, love your food, give it a massage. That's what I think, you know? Oh yeah. I hear that. I'll be right back. I'm gonna get, oh, I have a little spoon. Now, here's one of the things I want to show the audience. Again, we're kind of at different paces right now with the cooking, but it's okay. Is my sauce, because of the honey, if you look, it coats the spoon, and it's, like, it's very thick. And that's kind of, is that have the consistency that I wanted it? Like, it's not drizzling from the spoon. It's actually, like, dropping. Do we want it that thick, or do you prefer it? Yeah, you want it to be nice and thick, because then it's just going to stick with those wings. So good. So good. <laughs> I'm gonna have another tequila. Thank you, Brie. Brie says it looks good. Oh yeah. Brie has basically, I'm gonna, basically the sponsors of the show should be Brie and Carrie Gold Butter, but I'm really not sponsoring her. Like it's that good. Brie's cooking is spectacular and I love good food pictures and Brie just posts good food pictures like all day. That's delightful. Yeah, so it's funny. Um, my partner and I were meandering around the festival and like one of the things um, we were talking and we like got on the subject of food and um, how like Vegas has such good food and like where we That's live, cool. like there's some options that are great, but like. Do you mind saying where you live or like that? You're tired of it, you know? Cause like you've eaten the good stuff so many times, but. Uh, Do you mind saying great. where you live or what state or what, what kind of like area or? What, Missouri, what I'm in the Midwest. Really? Yeah. So what what brought you to Missouri? Well, um, oh, yeah. um, I initially moved out here just with my family. Um, like I moved out here not long before I went to high school, like went to high school here and all that, and stuck around for a while. Um, 
perfect. Look at this. It's perfect, I think. I think it's perfect anyways. Oh my goodness. I love this. Look how beautiful they look. Oh, those are gorgeous. I'm going to serve my, my people who are here really quick, and then I'm going to come back and cook with you. So the spiced wings of it should not. Just nice and coated. I love the walnuts between blend. So I didn't quite have enough honey in this. I'm going to add a little bit of um, my pot honey. The other honey that I have. This stuff how, is do you, really how do you know whether or not you have too much honey? Because I, I did manage to put like a quarter of a cup, but not half of a cup in. Um, I mean, now too, too much honey is a good question. I don't know if you're going to run into that, but... Um, the sauce could use a bit more of it. These are beautiful, I think. Oh, I mean, yeah, it's like the ugliest presentation, but I'm so happy with that. Well, I'll be right back. I'm going to get this serve my people. They're very hot. Yes. Yes. And then I'm going to make some more, um, some more rounds of them. Paper towel, of course. Oh yeah, definitely gonna need it. So. Mm. Well, I think your round two is gonna go in right as my round uh, one goes in. I think that's a big air fryer. Yeah, it's decent size. So I'm gonna go ahead and just load mine in. <laughs> Oh, so yours is so hot that it actually makes a sound when you put put it in. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that how hot we want it? I mean, I just let it run on the preheating cycle. Okay. Um, what did I say, 400 degrees? One second. I'm going to put my second round in. Well, just display real quick. You can see they're touching like a little bit, but for the most part, they're well That's beautiful. All right, one second. Hold on. I'll be right back. All right. Six minutes. I'm going to grant you just one more second. Tell my people that there's no burners. There's no burners. Yes. All right. So the people who I fed these to are very pleased and they said they want to tell you that they said yes just right so if you're if you are one of the two people who are watching at home which i love this thank you and i'm excited that people say it's really good and i'm actually going to eat the next the next round myself so that is thrilling i'm happy there's nothing better than when you cook something that's really good for people you care about it makes you really happy so i, I like I it that. absolutely love it yeah that's so like I made these wings for my partner and her daughter and um, they both absolutely love them. And I was like, okay, black and garlic, it seems like a nice fun ingredient for Halloween. Do you like, what is your, so do you like Halloween and what is your favorite holiday? I mean, I think Halloween wins. Really? Oh yeah. 
Are you going to um, yourself? What are you going to be? I'm actually a little torn because I think I need to probably hit Spirit Halloween tomorrow and find a good costume that I can use for performance because um, I think the third day of this festival that we're going to, um, so technically it's a four day festival, like some events start Thursday night. We're gonna get there pretty late. Um, but um, yeah, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, each day has a different theme. And I think Sunday is um, like just Halloween, like wearing Halloween costumes. But because I'm doing fire performances, I do want to make sure that whatever I get is um, not flammable, not not polyester, <laughs> not uh, yeah, not going to melt to my skin, or at least um, be something that I can treat pretty well that uh, allows for good movement. So, how um, do you? How long have you? Mm -hmm. I I have to ask because when you said it earlier, I didn't put two and two together. How long have you been doing the fire performances? And tell and tell me about that because that's fascinating. So um, in general, like I've been messing with various apparatuses on and off since like 2008. Uh, fire fans are like my favorite. I've been doing those since I think 2015, 2016 at Park. Um, I learned fire breathing this year. And uh, <gasps> yeah, yeah. So, I, so, so I'm a woman who's technical and can breathe fire. <laughs> I don't know if I could do fire breathing. I, yeah. I, yeah, I, I would freak me out a little bit. It's, it's fun. I, I really took to it pretty well. Um, although I did singe and I, an eyelash a little bit. What does it mean you took to fire breathing really well? So like you, um, how is one a natural at fire breathing? <laughs> So I think in my case, I was a brass player uh, okay. in school. Um, so like getting a good embouchure or atomizing fuel into an air, like a fuel air mixture out of your mouth. Playing brass instruments plays pretty well into that. Um, just you, you need to like create a spray out of your mouth with the fuel and the air mixture and I don't know, I take to it pretty well. So um, also I've got good lung capacity, so my sustain is pretty nice. Cheers, but I'm gonna have another tequila actually, by the way. Nice, yeah, we, we've been really getting into um, making drinks from this towel lately. I'm sorry, what, what were you getting into? Uh, mezcal. Oh, I love mezcal. I yeah. love mezcal. Love, um, love it. <laughs> So mezcal, my issue is that I'll have a lot of energy and I won't be tired and I'll feel fine. And like the next day I'll look at my text messages. I'll be like, what was I doing? Who was I talking to? What I, I have no idea. What, like, and I thought I was just great. And it was like two o'clock in the morning. I'm like, let's go have a snack. Like, what's, what are you up to? And I'm like, oh my God, like it's two o'clock in the morning, you know? So yeah, I, so I used to live in Mexico actually. And when I lived in Mexico, the last time I lived in Mexico, it was my first time being single in a really long time. And I just drank mezcal and ran around Playa del Carmen and just had a really good time. <laughs> so, <laughs> and was texting people at two o'clock in the morning for snacks. So yeah. As one does. No, nothing, nothing wrong with that. So I'm gonna get some ice, excuse me. And then put my wings. Here's a question for the audience. And again, it's this actually the audience, but this I'm not meaning myself. If you wanted to get into fire breathing, how do you how did you start? How did you get into that? How, do, how does one actually start fire breathing? I took a class. Really? Yeah, I would definitely go to someone that's experienced because um, it's it's not it's dangerous, you know. Like that is something that um, you want to be aware of the risks. It's good to learn um, technique and um, like one of the biggest dangers that you have to look out for is chemical pneumonia. What is that? 
So if you inadvertently inhale fuel, it's not good. So um, what happens is your body, um, well, you get pneumonia because you've inhaled chemicals into your lungs. So um, learning proper technique to avoid that or minimize the risk of that is important. Um, but something that uh, we did as far as preparing for it is um, practicing with atomizing water. So just like had a jug of water and put some water in your mouth and just yeah, doing the spray down correct. This makes more sense now why you were good with it with the your background with the there's still winds right if you're doing the the trumpet like or is it brass or brass and winds two different things I don't know. Uh, yeah, so brass instruments, trumpet, trombone, tuba, baritone, etc. Uh, wind instruments. I, I think some wind players definitely can take to it pretty well, like. Um, but I think a reed is a bit different from a mouthpiece. Yeah. So you have to like maintain some kind of mouth position or embouchure. But um, yeah, I don't know. You'd have to ask a wind player that fire breathes to see how well it helps them. Well, here's my question to you. So I'm watching you make the sauce. So I guess she's kind of, you're simmering the sauce while you're doing the chicken, correct? That's what's going on? Mm -hmm. um, do you want... How much heat are you doing on a sauce? Are you doing it on like a two? Are you doing it on like a like a low simmer? Are you doing it on a medium? Are you doing it? At, what kind of temps do you put the, the sauce on? So early on, I think I set it at like a medium. Um, at this point, it's just on a, on a nice and low, low to low medium, letting it kind of thicken up and stirring it periodically. All right, six minutes. I'm with my parents right now, and um. They, my mom just typed the peanut gallery loves the wings and wants more. So the second round, I got to bring back out to them. And then I, have nice. to, I have to chuckle that anything I say on here right now comes off as, as me saying I'm Bryce and Bort. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, which, by the way, anything that I say on here stays on YouTube. So I, it is a great responsibility. <laughs> so. So fun. Yeah, I'm, I'm ready for these wings. I'm, going to be getting into that. I'm the only one here at the moment. My partner um, still has classes she's working on. So Go. I did aerial for a little bit when I lived in Chicago and I was, I love it. I think it's very fun. And it was really funny because you get people who get very, in my class anyways, they got very competitive about it and that people would get really frustrated and i wasn't very good at it but i i liked it so much that i got stuck in the first level of class for like a long time and i was okay with it and i was like yeah nope that's fine like i'm just like i'm not excellent at this but i i like just trying and like working at it and it was fun for me you know what apparatus did you get into i did the trapeze so oh you did trapeze like a so was it a like a stationary trapeze or like a high flying it wasn't a high fly train. It was like hanging from the ceiling in a warehouse. And then I went, you know, back and forth and tried to get up and hang and do all the different hangs and hang nice. by, the and by the legs. And, um, so, yeah. Um, so I haven't messed with stationary trippings. I, uh, I do Lyra, the aerial hoop. Um, but I did do a high flying trapeze class when I was in Vegas. We did a little bit of training down there. And, uh, that was a lot of fun. Like I did not um, anticipate on my first class uh, getting caught by someone else in the trapeze. So like, you know, doing the swing down, transitioning to hanging from your legs, swinging back, and then you- I couldn't do that. No, I couldn't do that. I would, no, 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 no. Dude, no, so no. Fun. And then and they did a flip, but you know, like we were on lines and like had a net below us. Um, and we did training at Las Vegas Service Center. And, um, Give me one second. I'm going to get some more wings for my people. Hold on. Yeah. Oh, the sauce is just about perfect. So. Oh, it's very good. I like, I can't like the drumsticks and I like the other guy. Okay. This is a good sign. So, whoop. Oh, yeah. Nothing. <laughs> more wings. There's a lot left. There's like, so I basically have like another like 18 wings. I have a lot. Yes. So yeah, this the thickness is of the wings certainly. Um, uh, 
you know, like I can see the bottom of the pan when I run the pork through it and then you know, the, it kind of gradually settles back into place. But Mine are going in place in more minutes. Yeah, I think I've got two or three batches of myself to go through. But my first one will be done. <laughs> Wine. I'm very pleased that we did this with the air fryer. It makes me very happy. So, welcome, welcome to air frying. <laughs> <laughs> this was such an interesting conversation in my work chat about this, where um, someone, everyone was saying how great the air fryer is, and one person goes, "I have a spicy take. I don't like the air fryer." So, so they had one and they didn't like it. Yes. How's your wine, by the way? Is it good? It didn't vinegar? It didn't vinegar. It's good enough, at least. All right, so how are your wings coming along? Is everything looking good over there? Yeah, I've got uh, 45 seconds left on this first batch. Let's see, where did I? Where is my We'll be able to check that now. Some people would return them back to the uh, oven or the air fryer afterwards. And I think I just took mine and served them as is. Is that what you did? Just sauced it and then sent it? Basically. And then I think I'm going to steal my friend's air fryer from them and just never give it back. That's probably <laughs> what's going to happen. Like, so you, you need to get another air fryer, right? Like, yours is, uh... They're getting married. I mean, maybe I should just buy them one. Keep this for myself. Yeah, they, they, that's the move. You buy them another air fryer for, for the wedding. And then, like, so since since you got another one, you don't need this one. Beautiful, beautiful wings. Mm. Oh, my goodness. Look at those wings. Oh. Now, if you bring them to your partner, this is actually an important question, I think for the audience if you are traveling with the wings and bring them to someone do you just bring the wings separate and then sauce them there or are you saucing them ahead of time i think that would be the move to bring them and then sauce them i think so too um, i think the texture would be better like i i mean like i sauced all my wings and like left them for like my leftovers i just threw into the sauce and like eat the next day you could certainly just like throw them in the sauce and then throw them in the oven or into your air fryer and heat them back up. Oh. I will say until you make, everyone should make this at home because you can't understand the smell of the, the hot wing with the sauce on it until you actually have it in your house. And it's a really good smell. It's an excellent smell. I love this smell. I feel you. <laughs> um, it is delightful. So my really thick wing there is not at the point yet, so I'm gonna have to throw mine back in, unfortunately. All right. Tony Hunt, I do both, but if you like crispy skin, it will not be crispy later after being stored in sauce. I've heard that before. I'm bringing a second round of wings to the peanut gallery, who liked it so much they ate the first one. So, and I got a whole bunch more from This is just a friendly reminder for everyone here, whether you're Tony or Brie or whoever. I love cooking for anyone who I love. It's like my favorite thing, whether it's your parents or your partner or fuck, even yourself after a long day. It's just a good, I love it more than anything. Okay, so as a new air fryer person, can I just keep going if there's things in the basket? What do I do? What do you mean? You see, there's a oh, little, a little I bit. Of, I would, I would throw in another batch and keep going. Okay, I think so too. Clean it when you're done. <laughs> I think that's the move. I am going to taste the sauce. The sauce, though, it's here or not. Oh, you have to taste the sauce like multiple times. I feel like blown on it or something, but 
Hey, thermal lag is a thing. What is thermal lag? So when you take something hot, you put it to your skin or whatever. It takes a little bit for whatever the hot thing is touching to heat up and get burned. Ah, uh, yes, that's true. So um, comes into play, like, so if you're doing fire performances and you're doing fleshing, or you're, like, say, taking a fuel, like a lit torch with fuel on it, it's fine. If the fuel just burns off for a bit, like, it's not going to necessarily burn your skin. Um, so, so thermal lag is something to keep into play. Um, Did you, do you have arm hair then? I'm assuming you have no arm hair. Uh, where where I've burned is not any arm hair. <laughs> um, I did learn that you don't want to let your arm hair continue to burn though. Like you want to put yourself out. <laughs> yeah. Um, because it will continue to burn. And that's not good. I probably just have no arm hair and then just do it that. Get rid of it that way. Kind of like some very fancy hair removal system, really. I'm. So for this this um, show that I'm doing this weekend, there's not going to be any fire flushing or fire eating, or sorry, fire eating or fire breathing. So I'm probably fine. Like I'll be wearing, um, so I have Carbon X gloves that cover from like here all the way up to like my elbows. I'm not like using those when I'm performing with uh, fans just because like one of my pairs of fans is huge wicks on it just throws up so much flame it's nice to not have to worry about it i think i can already tell you're like pretty fucking cool if you're like what you spend your work money on is sound equipment and gloves for flashing like that's fucking well no it wouldn't be gloves for flashing because it'd be on the flash but gloves for fire reading that's awesome so fire fire breathing or not fire breathing sorry fire fire performances like i'm not wearing the gloves for other things um we did a uh burlesque duet back in july really um, yeah yeah and that was with uh, fire bubbles in my so so like my partner did fire eating like i did like so like taught me like some transfers so like i did a tongue transfer where like push the torch uh to my tongue left enough fuel there to keep it lit and then my partner like lit her torch off of mine um but then um, we did uh, fire bubbles, so took off my top and like put the bubbles on me and just. Yes. I, no, so what? No, what goes on with the bubble? What is what goes on with the bubbles? I'm so confused with the bubbles and the so, fire. So it's a uh, so it's like a soap and a water and a fuel mixture. Okay. So uh, it creates like bubbles, but they're flammable. That's. And then so it's on your body. Yeah. And then, you know, put it out. Okay. But since, again, since it, it's burning the fuel, not my flesh. And then because of the, what is it, the heat transfer lag or whatever, that you're like, you're probably okay for a while, actually. Yeah, I'm okay for a few seconds while the crowd is like, oh my God, what just happened? That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay, so fire, or excuse me, fire, sorry. Now I'm talking about fire rating and fire bubbles, and I'm like, what? Okay, so excuse me, meat thermometer into the chicken. What do we want the chicken at? 165. Okay. And for whatever reason, this chicken is taking forever. Like I've never had to cook it this long. Well, you know why? It's because it's because I was wrong that we could do it when it was partially thawed. Right. Th the that's straight up all that. I was wrong with that one. So, so. <laughs> so if your chicken is frozen hmm? still a little bit and not fully thawed, you'll definitely have to increase the time. So I'm just gonna flip these and uh, throw them back in there for another five minutes. Yeah. Give me one second, I'm gonna get my people some, some ice. Okay, we're gonna I will say the chicken smells and looks amazing. Can't wait to get into it. It's also like a really thick piece of chicken that's struggling. I think it's kind of like Electric Daisy Carnival, where you had so many acts, you want to see like a big, thick piece of chicken. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. So. Oh yeah, you know, like got a transition from the. It's funny we had like different names for the stages. Like, there's a techno stage that we called the Sausage Stage because like it was in this tent, um, 
So, so there's this tent that's like super reinforced. Like you can see the guide wires and everything going through it. It's like a like a hanger shape, rounded sort of thing. Super long, huge, huge, just wall of subwoofers at one end where the DJ is. And that's awesome. Lighting and sound strung through the rest of the structure. And uh, yeah, so had a had a robust casing. So that was the sausage stage. Um, yeah, I mean, that place is wild. Like the main stage, Connect Field, they have this like giant animatronic owl and like the head moves back and forth and they've got like pyro, they've got water features, so like fountains and like lasers and goodness. It is, it is a, such a spectacle. The um, only time I went to a rave, it was my favorite thing ever. My, um, and I always will remember this and I recommend it to people to this day. My friends tied a red balloon around my wrist. So they're like, no matter what happens, if you get lost, we can see you with this red, little red balloon. And I'm in this warehouse rave in Detroit and I had this little red balloon, like a little child around my wrist. And I'm wandering around and my friends were like, go oh, have fun, go dance. Cause I had never been to a rave before. And like, that was the whole thing is they always could see my little red balloon going from where they were sitting. And it was just, I, I highly recommend that if you are a first time ravers, have a little red balloon and your friends can find you. And that's excellent. So. <laughs> You know, normally when I see a balloon at a rave, I'm expecting it to be filled with non-helium. <laughs> yes, this was just like a... Um, because you don't want your phone on you and stuff like that. It's much more organic and fun that my friends could just track me down with a little balloon and I'm five foot tall, so I'm they can find me somewhere. So That's so fun. Yeah. Oh, there. I mean, God, there are so many people. Um, a lot of people have totems, though, and that would be like, like a sign or... Um, like some of them were lit up and they have like memes on them or any number of things. 158, I'm so close. 159, 160, oh my goodness, maybe I'm there. No, I'm like five degrees away from a safe chicken wing. Some of them are great. Like, um, there's like one, like one that's stubborn. Oh, those are beautiful. How are those not enough? Those are gorgeous. It's I am just below him. How, how many degrees? Five. Because the whole, I don't, so chicken will, has a, I forget the exact scientific name for it. Chicken has like a high, um, things called carryover cooking time. So it, it will keep cooking and actually it might raise the temperature, I think. But I'm not, again, I was, actually, I shouldn't be, I, I can't dispense any advice tonight because I, I was, gave the bad advice about the frozen chicken. So, <laughs> I think it's fine. And you know, the nice thing is by the time I put the other wings in there, which I think I thought better, they'll probably just be done in the normal amount of time. Do you have any music festivals for some people who I'm like a dabbler. Like I like to, I like to have a nice time. I like to enjoy myself and I would like something that's more, if I went to something that was in the middle of like the woods and was just kind of spun off like that, I'd be like, this is spectacular. What, like, what are the different experiences you would recommend for people who aren't necessarily into that scene who might just like want to experiment with it, you know? Well, I'll tell you, yes. if anyone wants to buy tickets, you have a couple tickets for sale to Sawani Halloween. So, so Halloween is um, a festival in Florida. Um, they do have bands like String, string Cheese Instrument, or, but, String cheese incidents. Yes, I used to like string there. cheese incidents when I was in high school. I used to love string cheese incident. Yes, yeah, so, so they'll be playing there. Um, Skrillex will be playing there. So like you've got a good mix of acts. Um, they'll be at that festival, and uh, all sorts of performances, art installations. Like um, there's this uh, Spirit Lake is where we'll be doing our fire performances, and uh, what I hear is very beautiful. Like lots of Spanish moss huge place, lots of camping. Um, from what I hear, Electric Forest is really nice. That's um, yeah. Michigan. So um, I was, um, cause I'm from Michigan. So everyone used to go to Electric Forest and it started right around the time when I was like in high school, college age where people were going to festivals and stuff like that. Um, and so yeah, people loved it. But then now, you know, because I know people who went to like the first couple, they're like, it's not the same, it's not the same. And, 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 like. It's, it's whatever you make it, I think, you know? Yeah. So like the teaspoon, like the teaspoon, it's whatever you make it, so. 
I think that's how a lot of things are. Um, yeah, I mean, a lot of it depends on like what your taste is. So I would say just you know, look at some lineups. Um, I, another one that I hear is really nice is a rise out in California, or not in California, Colorado, but I'm not sure that that's going to be a thing anymore because um, the area, I think the neighbors and everything were complaining too much. So I. I guess if I was in an area with something like that, I would have to figure out something where I was able to enjoy it myself, like in the most VIP way possible. Like I was like, okay, if you're going to, if I like won't be able to get to my house because of traffic and all this kind of stuff, I better be able to enjoy myself and you better be able to like pay. I, I don't know. You know, I wouldn't make I don't know why people move out to places where things like that are held. That's um, a fair point. I agree with you. Yeah, like um, I know Red Rocks out in, also in Colorado had a bit of that issue. You've got all these people that moved in, beautiful amphitheater, and then um, they've had all sorts of issues with like noise complaints, and whatnot. I think so it's to like, me, why that, did you move there? I think maybe that would be the perk where you'd be like, you like Red Rocks so much, like I live next to Red Rocks, it's awesome. So, yeah, I mean, I would love it, but um, I'm also the type of person that. Did manage to go to sleep on Fremont Street. <laughs> I'll be right back. I'm going to get, get the bowls for the more wings. Yeah, yeah. Yes. There we go. I'm at 10. Yes. I'm ready to eat some wings. Oh, my goodness. So the one thing we have to do for Unicorn Chef is when we're done, we have to take a picture of both of us with our, our cooking, what we cooked. Oh, okay, cool. Well, I'm about to, let me go ahead and pour mine onto a plate. Well, you toss it first. So I concur, by the way, the whole thing about the sauce, when you know you got it right, as you said, when you, when you bring the spoon through it, there should be a little bit of a line. I like that. Yeah, look at that wing. Mm. It just sticks Let me right see this fat fucking wing. Oh my God. That's, what, yeah. that's worth it. That's worth it. Look at that. Chunky. It's like Renaissance Festival wing. Oh yeah, like one of big old turkey legs. Oh my goodness. I guess there's something wonderful going on in the world of baseball. The Astros are the Astros, yes, from the great state of Texas. Something wonderful just happened, I guess. I, I have no idea. The world Tell me about it. What I'm curious. So, the Braves because we don't like their name and because they have supported anti-voting uh, re remedies. Have you heard? Have you heard? Did you hear my mother in the background? Oh, the Braves. They. My, um, my family is not for the Braves. She said because of the name and because they support anti-voting remedies. And they do a tomahawk chant. And they do a tomahawk chant. So my family is not for the Braves. Yeah, that's a whole freaking ugh. the yes. way that sports we'll seems so. Dwayne is a Georgia. Mom, mom, we'll keep we'll keep it light. We'll keep it light. <laughs> yeah, my um, my my old high school actually the mascot were the Chiefs, and they did a tomahawk chant. And there was a whole thing recently about trying to push towards ending that. And I think they're at least not doing the chant anymore, but they did not change the mascot name. One second, I'm gonna bring my people some wings. Oh yeah, get it, get it. Oh my goodness, that wing is beautiful. Mm. You gotta get my next batch going in my air fryer. Chimpkin hands. So I will, I will pull mine up in a sec so we can get a nice pick. Yes. One second. Yeah. 
I enjoy that Drew's most talk to Astros and also talk to the, the Braves and go Red Sox, which I love more than anything. So I don't watch any kind of baseball except for the Tigers, which I just like actually going there and seeing what's going on, which makes me so happy. So, so fun. I... I've never been like a huge baseball fan, but how do you appreciate going to a game? I think I had to chuckle because someone I like, I don't watch baseball on TV, but I like going to the games. And someone told me the other day, they're like, what do you do at a baseball game? Oh, look at this. Okay. Yours are much more beautiful than mine. Let me get a picture. And then we'll be done. Oh, I am actually having the same problem I was I had last time. I can never take a picture. Sorry, I'm a bad host. <laughs> oh, you're fine. I think they're beautiful. Thank you for coming over. And I say we take a break and eat these wings. And thank you for everyone who stayed with us. Cheers. I, look at yours, how beautiful and black they are. Those are excellent. Cheers, and everyone have a nice night. And if you want to donate to Devin's charity, again, it's um, Congo Children Trust, which is going to be, we can post in the um, into Twitter and enjoy your night. Thank you very much. And Devin, I'll keep you on just for like one minute, okay? Sounds good. Thank Later, you. everyone.